Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about my pre-k classroom assembly. Alrighty guys, so I am here in my classroom and I wanted to share with you guys some of the essentials that I use every day to keep myself organized and to make sure that my kiddos are having the best experience they can in their first experience with school. So I have created a top 10 list of resources that I think you need to make sure you're implementing in your classroom. Number one is an organization tool that I've seen tons of other teachers use and it was a no-brainer when I started my first job, which was in this classroom as a pre-k teacher. I decided to invest in these amazing Michaels scrapbook bins. So these bins are essentially what I use to organize all of my monthly themes. So as you can see on this, we have um, a little picture here that I just photocopied and taped on here for the month. And then I did a smaller version of it there as well because this sits on a shelf in my classroom so I can easily see that this bin is the March bin. Essentially what I put in here is all of the crafts that we do that month, any of the worksheets that are related to that month or the holiday, and I even put my read alouds in here as well. I also put all of my dramatic play center visuals in here as well because every month I do a different theme in my dramatic play center so I make sure that all of my visuals are in here and everything that I need for March is in one spot. So number two on my teacher essential list is my happy planner. I am such a paper and pencil person that it was a must to have an amazing planner for teaching. The first year that I was teaching, I used a plum planner. I liked it, but what I love about the happy planners is that you can add things to this planner as you want. I did end up investing in a happy planner hole punch, so that's like an addition to my essentials, uh, my top 10 essentials. So if you love happy planners as much as I do, getting the hole punch is a great investment because I use the happy planners not only for my weekly plans, but I also have another happy planner that I use just for my monthly theme ideas and my lessons and my anecdotal notes. And of course that stuff is, um, changes month to month and I have to add things in and so having that hole punch is great. So if you are looking for a planner, I would definitely recommend um, trying out a happy planner. So number three on my list is actually a teacher lanyard. So my lanyards that I use, I have two of them so far in my collection. Um, this is from Rob Jammed Couture. She makes the cutest lanyards that I have ever seen. She has these little silicone balls. They are super cute. You can get them in millions of colors, I'm telling you. You can tell that I like cute things in my classroom, so how could I not add an accessory that was cute for my wardrobe? Um, on my lanyard, of course, I have my key fob that lets me into my school. I have the key that lets me into all the doors. I totally recommend getting a cute lanyard. These ones are really nice because they have the um, breakable back so that if you get it caught on something or a kiddo accidentally pulls on it, it will pop right off of your neck, no problem. And, and now I'm gonna go ahead and actually talk about the fourth thing on my teacher must-have list. And so the number four thing is visuals. I am a huge fan of visuals in pre-k especially because lots of my kiddos are still at that point where they not only need to hear things auditorily but they also need visual aids to be able to understand what it is we are wanting them to do. So my favorite visual maker is uh, especially education. I will also link her below so you can go and check out her visuals. I just have some basic ones that I keep on my ring. The stop sign really is so far one of the only ones that I've really had to use, but I also put um, 
the star here for good job eyes on me listen quiet mouth and safe hands so these are all the essential visuals that i would need working my way around the classroom and i always have them on me she has tons of other like fine motor task bins that you can get as well as visual stuff um, she's got lots of things for students who need some first then or other behavior management um, visuals as well so make sure you go and check her page out Alrighty, number five on my list of essentials is a laminator i laminate basically anything that a student might touch in my classroom. And I also laminate things that I put up as decorations in my classroom, just because I find that if I laminate them, they last way longer. Plus, when you put the tape or all the sticky stuff on the back, it's just way easier if it's laminated because like I said, it lasts longer. I have tried a couple different laminators, um, but the Amazon Basic is my favorite laminator that I have come across so far. I like it because you feed the paper in and it's just a flat um, surface that it runs over. So the Scotch laminator that I purchased, I found that it jammed things all of the time. And there's nothing that I hate more than wasted color ink and wasted laminator packages that get all crumpled, crumpled and crinkled in the laminator. So if you are looking for an awesome laminator that really doesn't wreck any of your laminating ever, I would go with this Amazon Basic. Alrighty guys, so number six, yeah, six, number six on my list of essentials is my very own classroom paper cutter. Now I know that this might seem like a weird essential to have in my classroom, but if you've been in a pre-K or an elementary classroom, you know that you use a lot of construction paper, a lot of colored paper. I use tons of strips of paper for cutting things with my kiddos for crafts. And having this just means that I don't have to walk all the way down to the workroom, which really isn't that far. But when you're a busy teacher, it takes up a lot of your time to go down to the workroom in the middle of the day. So I decided to invest in this paper cutter for my classroom and it really has been a lifesaver. And it was under $30, like it wasn't very expensive and it has saved me on a ton of time and it makes sure that things are cut straight. All right, number seven on my list of essentials is a pointer stick. We do morning meeting in my classroom and with my morning meeting, we do calendar, we do weather, we do songs and dancing and we read books. But when I'm doing my calendar and when we are looking for our mystery number of the day, my helping hand gets to have their own hand to help them to find the mystery number. Um, these are just really fun. You can use them for all sorts of things, speech pull out, um, any kind of center that you have might have in your room i got these on sale they came in a bundle of three and they're super cute and you can find tons of different ways to use them in your classroom so number eight on my list of essentials is incentives my little ones will do anything for a sticker or a smelly spot and i'm sure you're wondering what is a smelly spot it's literally just fun flavored smelly chapstick that's all it is so basically um, usually at the end of the day when we're packing up because we're trying to promote independence in our classroom if they can pack up all on their own um, some days I'll bring out stickers for them or other days I'll bring out the smelly spot and literally I just rub it on the back of their hand and then they can smell it smelly spots are literally the most popular incentive that I have and they're probably the cheapest one that I have. But always make sure you have some kind of little reward for your little ones and they will do all the things that you need them to do if there is a sticker or a smelly spot for them at the end. So number nine on my list of essentials. Now I don't really have anything here to show you but I'm just going to tell you. Now, if you're around children in general, you know that they like to share their germs with us, sadly, as teachers. So that means we go through a lot of Kleenex, 
a lot of hand sanitizer, and just a lot of cold and flu medicines in general. So at the beginning of the year, I always ask parents to provide a box of Kleenex for the classroom. So I have 21 kids in my room this year, so that means I have 21 boxes of Kleenex to last us through the year. I also um, invested in um, good hand, hand sanitizer for myself and my EAs. Um, we do lots of hand washing in pre-K, but it's just nice to have hand sanitizer just for those times when you're working with a kid and then they decide to sneeze right on your hands or even worse, right on your face. So I make sure that I use um, Young Living hand sanitizer i love their thieves hand sanitizer it just i think that it has made a huge difference this year in me i only got one cold this year whereas last year i was basically sick the whole time i also have a um, diffuser in my classroom now your school might be have specific rules about what you can have in your classroom if it's like a no scent um rule or something like that but i actually use a diffuser in my room every day and if it is cold season you know i have thieves or frankincense going on in my classroom not only does it make it smell good but then it just gives me that peace of mind knowing that there's something in the air that is not just cold and flu bugs so i would recommend buying a diffuser or just investing in some good hand sanitizer if i were you Alrighty, and number 10, the last thing that I recommend for your classroom in pre-K is finding good resources. Now, my top favorite pre-K resource queen is from Pocket of Preschool. She has the most amazing resources that you could ever need. They are an investment if you do decide to go in and get lots of her bundles. But honestly, the best investment that I made for my classroom was buying her Dramatic Play bundle set because you get a whole bunch of different ideas that you can use for your Dramatic Play Center. And sometimes it's nice to just have those visuals. She even has ideas of how you can set it up in your classroom. You can set everything up or you can get your kids to help set stuff up for whatever you have going on in your Dramatic Play Center. And it honestly has made the biggest difference in the world because all I need to do is print it off and put it in my center. So that is way less work that I'm having to do. Also has tons of great character building resources. Um, my linear calendar that you guys may have seen in previous videos, um, I have, I will link my morning meeting video below as well so you guys can take a look to see how I use her linear calendar in my classroom. It is one of the best resources that I got as well. She has tons of great behavior stuff like i said i use red and green choices which is kind of the beginning of those zones of regulation um but just using those two colors instead and honestly she's my favorite if you have not had any of her resources or used any of them i would totally recommend that so i will be sure to link her store her tpt store below so that you can go and check out some resources for your classroom and the other resource that i have recently found and i do have something to show you from her. So this is a resource. This is a resource from Play Move Improve. So essentially, she has put together a bunch of resources for more so gross motor work. And now for me, my kiddos are also in here not just for speech and not just for occupational therapy, but I do have some little ones who are working on some gross motor skills. And when you're 3 and four and five you're just beginning all of these functional movement skills so that's essentially what she has provided in this resource is a bunch of different um, gross motor and even some fine motor activities that you can do with your little ones to help improve on their gross motor and fine motor skills this is just nice for me because well i'm not a gym teacher I don't really know a whole lot about that kind of stuff. So it's nice to just have resources like this that if you're like, hmm, what am I gonna do with my kids in gym today? Hey, I could do some ball transferring while crossing the midline. Or what else could we do? 
crossing over walking along masking tape so literally i have a ring full of ideas that i can just flip through every day in gym class Alrighty, guys i know that was a lot of stuff and honestly when you're thinking of resources that you need for your classroom, it's going to be what best fits your personality and the little ones that you have in your room. There are tons of other things that I love in my classroom, but those are just some of the things that I use every day that make my life a little bit easier and make my kids' lives that much better when they come into my classroom. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about in the video, be sure to um, put your questions in the comments. I will make sure to list everything that I showed you here in the description box as well so that if you are thinking you need to invest in one of those items in your classroom you'll know where to find them make sure you like this video and put comments and love and share with other pre-k teachers so that um, they can also see this video as well and just remember to find the beauty in every day bye guys